The government uh, talked to me about uh, what they are putting in place, particularly to meet uh, the needs of those who are internally displaced in the country and stress the impact uh, that uh, the conflict is having, particularly on infrastructure in the country and the need to restore that infrastructure. Uh, and the Minister for Local Government uh, went through uh, with me yesterday the plans that they are going to put in place to restore that uh, infrastructure. In terms of uh, the government support meeting every single uh, area of need, of course the security uh, situation uh, makes that uh, impossible because you have areas of the country which are not uh, controlled uh, by the government, they are controlled by the opposition and the government cannot go into those areas, which is why it's so important that we as independent humanitarian workers are able to go into those areas. I've been in Syria since Tuesday to see for myself the impact of the intensifying conflict and to discuss ways to increase humanitarian assistance. The violence has become more intense and is too often indiscriminate. All parties must do more to protect civilians. The humanitarian situation has worsened since I was here in March. Over a million people have been uprooted and face destitution. Perhaps a million more have urgent humanitarian needs due to the widening impact of the crisis on the economy and on people's livelihoods. Back in March, we estimated that a million people were in need of help. Now as many as 2.5 million are in need of assistance, and we are working to update our plans and our funding requirements. The United Nations and its partners are reaching more people with emergency aid every month but we're only meeting some of the needs. It's not enough. Insecurity and restrictions are part of the problem. But funding too is holding us back. There is more that we could be doing right now in areas that are safe enough and where we have established solid partnerships with NGOs and with the Syrian Arab Red Crescent. I continue to lobby the government to be more flexible in its approach to humanitarian operations. There's no reason why ordinary Syrians, men, women and children, should not receive as much help as is practically possible. What we're seeing on the humanitarian side is an increase in humanitarian needs. In March, we estimated that about a million people needed help. We think that that figure is now as high as 2.5 million. So from my perspective, the number is uh, going up. It's very hard to say that there is a light at the end uh, of a tunnel. Uh, what we have is an intensification uh, in the violence, uh, which is leading to even more people in need. As I've made clear on many occasions, the first thing that has to stop is the fighting. If the fighting stops, then it means that more people will be able to return home. They will be able to restart their livelihoods. I'm concerned, for example, that uh, the harvest this year has not been as good as it should be. That's partly because people have not been available to harvest. Uh, this is going to mean that food prices will go up. All of this will have an impact in the longer term.